and welcome back to my channel. Horses are extremely expensive animals to keep. So here I'm gonna go through some tips and tricks on how to make them as cheap as possible to keep. You'll have to watch to the end to get the most important tip where I think the timber merchant will become your best friend. The first major expense that we have to think about is where you keep your animals. Are you going to be on a DIY yard, on your own yard, on assisted livery, full or part livery? It all depends down to your needs. What do you need from your livery yard? Do you want a bog standard DIY yard that DIY stands for do it yourself. So you have to do absolutely everything for yourself. But then how far away is it from your house? Is it going to be expensive in fuel to get there? So you're not actually going to be saving money on the DIY cost if you're spending it all in fuel. So then you have to look at the choice of assisted livery where you pay that little bit more but they might turn your horse out for you of a morning so then you've got one less journey to make so of course we'll save you in fuel full livery is great where they turn your horse out and they muck it out for you and do all that so you actually only need to go up to ride and see your horse but that comes with a big expense I have my own yard. It has its perks and it has its downfalls. I'm completely on my own. So I've got no one to call on to feed my horses for me if I fancy a day off or anything. But the costs of having my own yard are so much cheaper. Um, but I have to do all the maintenance that comes with it. I've got no electric no water and no school but I work around that it has its benefits that I can turn my horses out when I want to and not if it's too wet or too hot I have my own rules on the yard I'm not dictated to by anyone else if you like what you see then please boop the like button so when I want to use the school, I go and hire one of the local schools, which is a cost in itself, but the money that I save being on my own yard benefits that. Um, as I say, I've got no electric, but I do have a generator that I put on through the winter. All the stables have lights plugged in. I just need to turn the generator on and they're there. As I say, the water, I've got no water on my yard, but luckily one of the next door neighbours allows us to use their tap in their garden. So I just connect hoses to that. The hacking round mine is a bit, absolutely amazing hacking, but I have to cross the road to get there. But that's something I'm willing to do for the luxury of my own yard. Choosing where you stable your horse is all down to what you need. Do you need a stable? Do you just need grass livery? Do you need a solarium or a horse walker, um, an indoor school, an outdoor school? That is personal preference to you. Another way to save money with horses is buying in bulk. I have four horses, so I go through a lot of fly spray, shampoo, stuff like that. So like the shampoo, I buy the big five litre drums and then I tip it into a smaller bottle to make it easier to use. But of course, buying it in that size bottles makes it that little bit cheaper. Same as the fly spray. You can get that in five litre bottles as well and just refill your one litre bottle and use it that way. And that also brings us on to supplements. Bigger tubs that you can buy actually works out cheaper. So if you're gonna have your horse on a supplement long-term, it's financially beneficial to buy it in a bigger bulk. But then there are some supplements that you buy at the horse shop that 
are really quite expensive that you can actually buy the horse equivalent, which is cheaper. Just the likes of um, magnesium, expensive for horses, but there is a horse equivalent, same as turmeric um, and stuff like that. The cod liver oil, I that's expensive at the horse shop. I just go to the local supermarket and I actually feed mine corn oil. Um, it does the same sort of thing, but of course is financially a lot cheaper. And also the product that you use in your stables, do you use straw, shavings, paper? Can you buy that in bulk? I, depending where you are, DIY livery doesn't usually give you much storage space, but is it cheaper to buy the big bales of straw instead of the little ones? I have the big ones because it's cheaper, but I have the storage space for it. But then this will be where you will actually realise you tim the timber merchants can actually be your best friends. If a timber merchant local to you has a sawmill, there is a chance that they would be able to sell you the shavings that come from it. Of course, it is not dust extracted, but again, it's a financial saving if your horse is okay on shavings like that. A farrier is a much needed person in your horse's life. As they say, no hoof, no horse. So you don't save money by spreading out your shoeing sessions, but um, you have to work the pros and cons on whether you have shoes on your horse or you have them barefoot. I, out of my four, two are shod, two are... Donut's not shod, he's only a yearling, but I keep all my horses without shoes for as long as possible. They only have shoes on if they need them. Gambler had shoes on whilst he was driving. Now he's not driving, he is barefoot. Champ has only just had front shoes put on him, only a month or two ago, um, because he was just finding it a bit sore on the stones. So it's now time for him to have shoes. Willow's got shoes all round, mainly because of his suspensory. He was shod when he'd done his suspensory injury and the vet and the farrier have both stated that it's beneficial now for Willow to keep his shoes on. Another way to save money if you're on your own yard like myself is to, it's a bit time consuming, but bag up your manure. You have to pay the farmer to take it away but if you bag it up and put it outside your gate with a sign saying free manure on, the allotments local to you will come and take it. As I say, it's time consuming because you spend your time bagging it all up. But they will, over the year, take quite a bit of the manure away from you for nothing. Rugging horses is also really expensive, but you have to weigh out the pros and cons on if your horse actually needs a rug. If they're not clipped, they very rarely do need a rug unless they're really thin-skinned horses. You might need a, a rug to keep them dry in the winter if you're wanting to ride, but you don't need rugs to keep them warm if they're not clipped. But that also brings us on to clipping horses. If you clip a lot through the year, and you get someone in to clip for you, would it be beneficial for you to buy your own clippers and learn how to clip yourself? Um, if you've got someone coming in every six, eight weeks clipping your horse, it all adds up. I personally clip all my horses myself. I have a set of clippers and do it all there myself to save money again. Whether you compete your horses is a decision all down to yourself but that will also impact on where what yard you keep your horses at if you're just a happy hacker then of course you want a yard with less facilities but brilliant hacking competitions can get extremely expensive especially with the fuel cost at the moment traveling to and from them but that also brings us on to transport is it more beneficial for you to have a trailer, a horse box or hire a box if you don't go out that often?
this then brings me on to my last tip where in all fairness the timber merchants can be your best friends as i've said earlier on in the video if you've got a timber merchant with a sawmill you might be able to get shavings cheaper but if you actually look in the timber merchants they have like your general water buckets that you have in the stable they sell them for the builders usually come in bog standard colors i know i've got a black and yellow water buckets um from the timber merchants for half the price they've also got the normal smaller water buckets again not many colors but the the price difference is really good and of course they they will also have wheelbarrows basically half the price of the equestrian wheelbarrows and they still do the same job. I also have little bits around the yard that I've got from timber merchants. In the stables, all my horses have rug rails, but they're not the equestrian, equestrian equivalent. It's just guttering with a bit of baling string put through it. And it holds the rugs absolutely fine. Also, I have some white guttering that I put round my field as like the dressage boards that's come from the timber merchants and also my trot poles. I don't buy the equestrian trot poles. I, not many timber merchants do them. You have to find out which ones, but you can get the round poles. Mine are 12 foot long, so I could actually cut them in half and have double the amount for jumps. Um, but yeah, I just get the wooden poles from the timber merchants. If I want to paint them, I can. I've got all miners creosoted, so they're like working hunter colours. But you can paint them to whatever colour you want, but they're half the price of a normal trot pole. The water containers that we usually just take to the shows, the timber merchants also sell them for a hell of a lot cheaper than you can buy them online. Of course, you haven't got the funky colours. My water container is just white, but it does exactly the job that I need it to do. Also, the garden centre, you can buy all your forks, your brooms, your shovels there for half the price of the equestrian equivalent. And then the likes of Wilkinson's and B&M, you can get your sponges, your microfiber sponge thing that we use to bath the horses i just buy mine from there horses are extremely expensive so we have to save money where we can without reducing the care that we give our horses that's the end of this video if you like what you see please like and subscribe hit the notification bell so you don't miss an episode thank you